My first interaction with the center um, was in either 2002, 2003. And I came here, um, I, at the time I was an undergraduate at the University of Delaware. And I came from, I'd come up from Atlanta, that's where I, where I lived um, in high school. And I, did not, I didn't have a community. I didn't have an LGBT community. I'd recently come out. And we came to the city and people always ask, what did you do when you were in Delaware? Well, the only thing you do in Delaware is you come to Philadelphia because there's nothing to do in Delaware. So we would come up as a big group, just a ton of us, would come up for all kinds of events at William Way. And I wasn't terribly familiar with the space. People just kept talking about, this is where we go. We go to William Way. And the first time I came here, I remember being really thrown off by the size of the building. So um, not having a community, I did not really have a concept of um, a building dedicated specifically to the LGBT community. I was very familiar with spaces dedicated to this community, right? Because we were, because I had um, organizations that I was a part of. And um, at the time I was serving on the board of our LGBT student group in Delaware. So I, I was familiar with that, like an office. But a building, that, that was not a concept that I had previously understood. So walking into this space, seeing the words LGBT center on the, on, on the door, seeing a massive rainbow flag outside of the structure, and then coming in and seeing that, that grand staircase. Um, I'll, I'll, never, I'll never forget that. I talk a lot in my work about visibility and representation in the, in the community. I talk about that specifically as being a woman and being a, a person of color in this community and just in life. Um, but like as a queer person, uh, having a space like this that is dedicated to you and it's visible in the middle of um, one of the largest cities in this country and it's your space, it's yours. Um, at the time, I didn't even know that we owned the building, um, but now having that knowledge, that takes it to a completely different level. Like this is truly our home. Um, being an 18 year old that um, was lacking community in a lot of ways and having that be my first introduction um, to particularly the, um, the, the Philadelphia community uh, is just, just something that I'll never forget. The reason I came, uh, it's kind of funny, it was actually for a queer wrestling event. Uh, <laughs> we ended up in William Way for a lot of different reasons. There was speed dating that happened at the time, um, drag shows, all kinds of things. But the very first time was a queer wrestling event. And I remember being actually surprised because I think my preconceived notion was that if they were going to be, I knew it was a co-ed thing and I knew they were gonna be, I figured there were gonna be a lot of men and women that were kind of shy about getting involved, but that was not at all the case. It was predominantly lesbians and there were a few guys and it was, it, we were co-ed wrestling. There were mats, there were two mats, you kind of had to wait in line to get to them. You clean them up after every, um, every match and it was awesome so well attended like, like I said men women people of um, genders in between and they just got in they got involved together um, interestingly enough one of my friends was actually really good at queer wrestling and was actually gonna join the Spartans team and in like her last kind of match before she was about to officially sign up for the team she broke her collarbone and <laughs> unfortunately the match was like totally thrown off and her um, budding wrestling career was completely ruined but <laughs> We kept going and we kept having a blast. Everybody comes here. Everybody comes here. Even if um, they, even if they're people that don't necessarily connect with the center as a home for them, which by the way, a lot of people do, but even if they don't indicate the center as a home for them, they have been here. They have been in these walls for something. It is really difficult to be involved in the Philadelphia LGBT community or the Philadelphia community in general um, for any number any period of time and not have been in these walls. I um, served as a grand marshal for, for Pride a few years ago and that was another one of those moments, just being up there and um, being able to, to represent folks. I have, a, I have a business in the community. Uh, I built a business in this city uh, partly because of my experience at William Way and um, being able to, being able to um, be on, serve on boards, um, learn how to help run the, the Philadelphia Dyke March for, for I mean, I've, I've been helping to run that for seven or eight years, um, being able, which also takes place in the center. Being able to do these things in the center, learn how to be a leader, learn how to work with different people um, that come from all kinds of different backgrounds, that is something that I would not have 
gained elsewhere. Um, I, in my other life, I direct a college prep program at the University of Pennsylvania, and there I have to be a leader. But still, before I even took on that position, I was here at the center. I was, I, I think, it actually, actually, this is a hilarious story. In order to prepare for my interview for that position, I met with my mentor at the center to prepare for that. So it's like literally that leadership that led to this other part of my life was fostered very literally downstairs in the lobby of this center. I've talked to people, um, and to be fair, they've been predominantly younger folks that say the center doesn't do anything for me. I have played a community, I have my friends. Um, a lot of those people get their friends inside the bar. And to be, to be totally honest, like part of my business, my business is nightlife business, it exists inside bars. So I definitely understand and appreciate the importance of our um, nightlife community in this city. Uh, what I still say, though, is that we need a wealth of experiences. We need experiences outside the bars. We need experiences in our own spaces that are just our spaces. Even if you feel like you get com community outside of the center, it's really important to understand that that's not everybody's experience. And there's people that don't feel comfortable inside bars, they don't feel comfortable inside their church or with their family, and maybe in these four walls, this is their home. Um, it's important to give back to those folks. If you are blessed enough, if you are lucky enough um, to have a space outside of this community center, just pay it forward and recognize that that's not necessarily everybody's story. It helps people, it, it's, it saves lives, it is a place for celebration, it is a safe space. It's a, um, I'm, I'm thinking now, it's a place, not just for celebration, it's a place for mourning. Like we've talked about this, um, through this day, one of the most profound losses of my life uh, was one of my best friends, uh, Crystal Baltimore. She died. Uh, she died several years ago, and um, she committed suicide. And um, I remember the day that we all found out. I remember the phone call. I remember exactly where I was. I remember speaking to her, um, her father on the phone, and I remember. Um, I remember my friends and I. Um, I remember my friends and I feeling very lost at that moment. She was, um, she was a woman that was so outgoing, so full of life, and um, we, all, we all got together, and we decided that immediately a memorial had to be planned. And we knew that her parents were going to give her a memorial in a church. And we knew that that was not necessarily what Crystal wanted. And what we did know that there were two places in the city that meant a lot to her. One of them was the Attic Youth Center, and the other one was the William Way Community Center. And it happened here. It happened in the ballroom. And I remember that day, a week or two after she passed, the ballroom was filled. It was filled, it was filled with about 200 people. But that moment, that moment is the perfect reflection of the center, the center's work. That moment is the perfect reflection of the community. That's who we are. That's who we are. And that's why we need a space. That's why we need a building. I don't know. I cannot think of a single other place that would have held that energy, that would have contained that spirit in the way that the ballroom did on that night. We had another memorial the year after that. And again, people came out, they talked it. It wasn't, it was a space for Crystal in her memory, but it was also a space for community mourning, but in community healing. People talked openly about their own experiences with depression, with depression, their own experiences with loneliness. And we held each other, we cried in that room, in that room together. We healed each other in that space. And there is no other place in the city that functions in that capacity. We are just so lucky to have this home. We are so lucky to have this building. And we are, we are profoundly lucky to have this community. <laughs>